How many know that we serve a good God? Is there anybody in here that knows that we serve a great miraculous God? Hallelujah. If you understand and you know that we serve a good God, just shout, you're good and your mercy endure forever. One more time. Lord, you're good and your mercy endure forever. Come on, come on. If y'all don't mind, can y'all clap your hands? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Everybody clap. Come on. Come on, right here, everybody. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Come on.
I just need somebody to recognize this morning real quick that beyond whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing this morning, you can declare you serve a good God. See, I think some of us might be thinking about all the things we may not have and some of the things that we want and wish we could do. But this morning, I'm encouraging you to just focus on the giver of all good things, the master of everything, and know that wherever you are in your life right now, it's all a part of his plan. Do we ever really understand that? We can be frustrated. We can be upset. We can begin to look and see what others might be doing. But can we actually be grateful that we're still here? Oh, my goodness. This is kind of basic. You know, I have so many things I feel like I could just celebrate, 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 celebrate. But at the end of the day, even, you know, I, I got the chance on this week to watch my oldest daughter, my firstborn. I, I got to watch her on Thursday graduate from high school. And, and it was an exciting moment because, you know, when you start watching those things, you start thinking about when you were in that moment. And it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was a long time ago for me. But then, two days later, I got to watch her yesterday receive her associate's degree from the University of Akron. And that hit a little bit harder. You're 18 years old. You just had the opportunity to graduate from high school. That's a blessing right there. But you did the work throughout those four years to do enough to graduate also. And I wish I could say, you know, I've been the best father and I've done so much for her. But I know that without God, and his unmerited favor that this would not be. I can't think that there's anything about me because I know she put in a lot of work too. A lot of work. But I'm just so proud of her. But it's an opportunity to give God thanks. But I have to be careful not to give God all the thanks just because of what's happening. But I have to remember, I still give him praise just because of who he is. So my praise should never be predicated on what he does for me. But it's just about who he is. He does good things. He keeps on doing great things. And it's our opportunity to focus on those things that really we can give God glory for. Because in those same moments, we see individuals that are hurting. We turn on the news, we still see there's more mass shootings happening every day. But in everything, we've been taught to give God thanks. And I just hope this morning, on this first Sunday of May, that we can begin to think about all the great things God has done in our lives. I just want us to take a moment, take a moment, take a moment. Because the fact that you're just in this building today is a blessing. Sometimes we don't have to wait for anything major, anything big. But God, I thank you for the breath that's in my body right now. I thank you, Lord, that I was able to get up this morning and get myself together and get into a car and drive in here. And however you made it here today, you are here. And that's enough to give God thanks. So this morning, as we just welcome you to another Sunday, another opportunity to give God glory, give God praise, let's not take for granted 
all the good things that he has done. Mm. I see y'all playing a song I really love. Brother Jeff, can you help me out? Because y'all don't want to hear me sing this, but I, it's in, I feel that. Say I am rich. Yes, because of what? Because of what? done for us and now let the weak say thank you, Lord, for you are an awesome, mighty God, and we truly give you all the glory and all the praise. We thank you that no matter what, we, what state we find ourselves in, you are a great, good God. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you bestowed, but we thank you even for the trials you've brought us through. We thank you, Lord, that we are stronger in you. We thank you, Lord, that we can declare we have a father in you. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we're asking, oh God, that as we feel your presence even now, oh God, that you will rest, rule, and abide in this place. This is your house. And we just want to create a habitat of worship, a habitat of worship, God, that you can feel comfortable in your house, God. We thank you. And we will give you thanks. We will give you thanks. We'll give you all the praise, for you are worthy. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Lord. And we shall give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, city of joy. Praise the Lord, city of joy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I dare you to lift up your worship in this place and shout with the voice of triumph, for this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will...
of our strength you're the source of our joy our peace we love you because you first loved us hallelujah
care what the weather looks like. You didn't care what the forecast called for. He said, I just got to get into the house of God. So I just need a few people to just stand on your feet and give God a praise for just who he is. He's been a good God. He's, he's been a mighty God. He's, he's been a kind God. He's been an everlasting God. He's been a faithful God. He's been a on-time God. He's been a right now God. He's been a amazing God. Hallelujah. Oh. Patrice graduating with our masters. Can we give God a quick hand praise for our first lady on her accomplishments? Hallelujah. Somebody say same grace, same grace, same grace. Hallelujah. 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 You can have your seats this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to the City of Joy Life for Richmond Center where we know Acts 8 and 8 says there was great joy in that city. Welcome to all of our new visitors. City of Joy, can we just clap our hands for all our new visitors. Make them feel real welcome this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you to those that have joined in this morning. If you can all do me just a quick favor and take out your phones and go ahead and share the live live feed. We want to get the word out to as many people as possible. Hallelujah. 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 Just a just a few quick announcements for those uh, that we just praise and thank God for those that came out to uh, pull up for prayer. Our release show glory. We had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful turnout. We had individuals walk up for prayer as well as pull up for prayer. So we praise and thank God for those that were able to come out and join us. Hallelujah. Also Tuesday, Tuesday is CIS group at the LEC at 7 p.m. Make sure you come out for that. They're, they, they're currently in a book series, so uh, make sure you see the leaders of the CIS group for more information. In addition to that, I, 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 I have to put a plug in for uh, uh, I Prevail registration is still open. Amen. Make sure you get in there. If you're not in there, I'm telling you, it's going to be a mighty, mighty time, mighty move of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. That's what we have the men's group coming up this Saturday at 10 p.m. in the Life in Richmond Center. All right. All right. I got some people in the house. I praise God for our men that's doing something. Amen. Amen. 
Also, our singers group is meeting on Wednesday, May 17th at 7 p.m. Make sure you see the leaders for more information. Um, in addition to, to that, our Good Samaritan group will be partnering with the Sarah's House on Saturday, May 20th at 8 a.m. Make sure you get connected to that as well. That is our Good Samaritan group, our evangelism team. And also, more information to come, but the gathering with... Amen, amen, amen. So just a quick moment here, if I can just honor the Lord. Because he's been so good. He's been so faithful. He's been so kind. He's done more than what I've ever expected. In addition, honoring our, our bishop, Maceo Smith II, and our first lady, Pastor Patrice. If we can give God a hand praise for them. Hallelujah. 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 I want to honor our pastor, our pastors, Pastor Hampton and his wife, Minister Latoya, as well as Pastor Devon and his wife, Minister Angela. Can we give God a praise for them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to also honor all of our ministers, all of our deacons, um, and all of our small group leaders, anyone that operates in any capacity of ministry. We just want to give God a, a hand praise for them being the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. And lastly, but not uh, the, the least, um, I just want to honor my husband uh, that's in the house this morning. Can we give, give God a praise for my husband? Amen. Amen. I want to thank my family that has come out, my father that has come out. Um, I thank God for having a supportive family. Amen. 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 So there is a word in the house this morning. There is a word in the house this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. So if you can just all stand as it is customary in the house of God. In this house that we stand for the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. We're going to be reading from Joel 2 and 25 through 32. And it says... And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else in my people shall never be put to shame. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord, right now that you would add a blessing to the reading of this word in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus, oh God, from the pulpit, Father, Lord, to the parking lot in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, that no weapon that has been formed against us will be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, Lord, that you shall condemn. Father, I come up against every spirit of distraction, every spirit of division, every spirit of disruption. Everything, oh God, that would try to hinder the word and the move of God in this place. Father. Lord, this day, Father, I decrease, oh God, so that you can increase, Father, the more and the more. Father, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that you would open up the hearts and the minds of your people, Father, Lord, so that they can receive exactly, Father, what you have called for them to receive on this Sunday morning. Father, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that you would go up and down, Father, each and every aisle, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would station your angels, Father, for the north, south, east, Father, and the west, oh God, that even as your word declares, Father, Lord, that the angels are, are sent to aid and, 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 and serve the heirs of salvation, Father. So, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, right now in this moment, God, that you are troubling the waters, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, right now in this moment, God, Lord, that you are opening up the heavens, oh God. I thank you, Lord, right now in this moment, God, Lord, that you are already doing exactly, Father, what you said that you would do, Father, for us, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. So if anyone asks what the message was about today, if you come across someone throughout your week and they ask what the topic of the sermon is, tell them, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Matter of fact, turn to your neighbor to the left and to the right of you and tell them, 
I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed. See, you saw the songwriter said it like this. I, I've been redeemed by the love of my Father, redeemed by the hand of my Savior, redeemed, lovingly saved, grace made its way to me. Now I am redeemed. You see, the Bible declares, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, so I just need a few people in this room that's not afraid to say that they have been redeemed. Uh, if you've been redeemed, I just need you to tell your neighbor on the next row I've been redeemed tell the person in the back row I've been redeemed those in the front I've been redeemed I, I just need for a few people not to be ashamed of the gospel of God because it is the very power of God hallelujah you see when I look back on what's been announced to us in the last five weeks of Sundays and and consider the titles of the messages such as untied to ride and people like Peter and more than I ever expected. God's about to blow my mind. Faith made me do it. And lastly, not today, Satan. There seems to be an underlining theme to get the people of God to understand who they are and whom they belong to. And, and, and most importantly, the power that we carry. You see, my assignment today is not to give you a new message and not to give you something that make you feel good, but to enlarge, develop, and increase upon what has already been spoken unto us through the power of the preached word. Okay, uh, uh, because the Bible declares in Hebrews 6 and 1, therefore, let us leave the elementary teaching about Christ and go on to maturity. You see, you see, I came to announce to you this morning that there is another level and a greater dimension of redemption that God is calling you to get back what you thought you lost. Okay, uh, uh, God is saying, you, you're time to get back what seemed to be gone forever. And when they said, you could never. You see, today is the start of your redemption. And by the time you leave out of this church, you will be declaring I've been redeemed on a whole nother level. You see, I know that's not for everybody, but for those that will receive it, if you can just give God a quick praise in advance, if you can just give God a praise anyhow, if you can just give God a praise, hallelujah, in the midst of your trial, trouble, and tribulation, you become because you are entering into your, redemp your redemption season. You see, you see, it was already declared over us in this year, the 14th year of the city of joy anniversary uh, uh, that this will be a year of deliverance and salvation so I can't thank you Kelker uh, uh, so, so I came to extend where there was once a period and add a conjunction and declare that this is your year to be redeemed okay okay uh, somebody said point of information elder see I thought deliverance and salvation and redeemed are meant the same thing I mean they're, they're very similar and, and they're synonymous with one another and I'm so glad that you asked. and deliverance are similar but it's the redemption part that I really came to expand upon and redemption has a threefold meaning the first meaning is to pay a ransom you see the bible declares in hebrews 9 and 12 he did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves but he entered the most holy place once for all by his blood thus obtaining eternal redemption who am i talking about i'm talking about the savior jesus christ that he was the ultimate sufficient appropriate sacrifice for the penalty of sin once and for all people. The number two meaning is removing our sin and standing in our place. The, the Bible says in Galatians 3 and 13 that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by uh, becoming a curse for us. Okay. Uh, because Christ was the sufficient acceptable and perfect sacrifice I am now crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You see, God removed 
my sin as far as the east is from the west. And, and now I am no longer a slave to sin, but a bond servant to Christ under the law of grace. Okay, okay. Uh, the number third meaning of redemption, it says to effect a full release. Okay. Romans 3 and 24 declares, and all are justified freely by his grace to the redemption that came with Jesus, with Jesus Christ. Okay. What do you mean, elder? I need you to break that down. Okay. Uh, see, redeem means to recover. It, it means to buy back. It means to regain. It, it means to compensate. You see, that word justified in Romans 3 and 24 has more to do with just going from guilty to not guilty from dirty to clean to being dead to sin to now alive in Christ but it also carries with it a judicial undertone that now our legal rights have been restored okay 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 our legal rights have been restored from that which was lost because God said in his word that in the beginning, God created both man and woman in his image and in his likeness. And But the fact is, when Adam sinned, some of that image was lost. Uh, but Christ, when he arose from the grave uh, three days later, we now have a legal right to take back what was taken and so therefore God goes on to sing in Jeremiah 29 and 11 during the time where the Israelites were in the captivity he says for I know the plans that I have for you uh, declares the Lord I, I still have plans to prosper you uh, and not harm you uh, I still got plans to give you a hope a future and an expected end you see I almost called this message you're gonna have to pay me everything you owe me times two uh, I almost called this message I'm old back pay uh, I almost called this message I'm getting everything I lost and then some uh, I almost named it you will recover all I, I almost called this message hallelujah you're gonna have to pay me back with interest on top of it okay okay let me break this down a little bit more I'm sorry, not sorry, uh, but you see, I was out to dinner the other day with a family member. I love my family. I was out to dinner with a family member. She said that she had a gift card that was a few years old and, and maybe at least three, and, and she had to put up and never use it. You know who you are. See, see, she recognizes value enough to keep it safe with the hope and expectation that one day that it will be a blessing. You see, we put so much emphasis on, on where we're going and, and what's next and the next blessing of the next open window and the next open door that that we forget that on our way hallelujah to destiny that we dropped off some things we needed in the next destination come on here somebody we took the wrong turn and picked up a habit and left our dreams we we got held up by betrayal and lost our ability to trust uh, we got stopped by rejection and it took our desire for friendship you see moving on is great but being redeemed means there's some things that you lost along the way and and before long like most of us uh, we forget about it and never use it and never understanding that there's a threefold benefit to redemption Just like the gift card, you forget that your redemption came with some benefits. The number one is it was free. Come on here, somebody. That you didn't have to buy it. Some, the, somebody already paid the price for it. Uh, number two, because somebody already paid the price for it, you was able to purchase whatever you want from the menu. Okay. See, number three, you got to eat for free. You said, the Bible says in Psalms 23 and 5, hallelujah, that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with with oil and my cup runneth over. The Bible says, uh, and Isaiah 61 and 7.
seven. Instead of your shame, you shall be a double portion. And, and instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. And therefore in the land, they shall possess a, a double portion and they shall have everlasting joy. I thought I was in the house of God this morning because our church declares uh, in Acts 8 and 8 there was great joy. Yes, you are free. Yes, you are free. And you're being redeemed. Many salvation is just the beginning. And, and there is a work in you that God has ordained since the beginning of time. And, and just like that gift, hallelujah, just like that gift card that been sitting waiting to redeem, be redeemed, so are you fully, hallelujah. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, but we have this treasure, hallelujah, and earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Oh, okay, okay. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for it was by grace the faith that yourselves have been saved and it is a gift of God for, for we are his workmanship uh, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Hallelujah. For the Bible says in Jeremiah 18 and 6 uh, that you are the clay in the potter's hands and I am the potter. I need somebody to give God a praise right now with this place for your future not being haunted for your future not being delayed for understanding that you still got a little bit more left in, and you got some time you need to recover it and you got some oh God hallelujah you got some opportunities that's still waiting for you hallelujah that I'm understanding hallelujah that I'm all some things you see I came to announce to you that it's time to cash out See, there's, on the, there's something on the inside of you that's ready to be released. <laughs> there's some ideas that's ready to be birthed. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, there's a generation that's ready to come from your loins. Somebody say, redeem, 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 redeem. He said, there was a woman. The Bible refers to as a Shunammite woman. You know, because they always refer to a woman by... Where she being, not where she's going, okay. All right. And big, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm a woman, I'm a woman preacher, I'm sorry. Uh, and because of a famine, she found herself living in Ph Philistine for, for seven years. And, and when she came back, her house and field have been taken. You see, she lost something while simultaneously saving her life. You see, because when you're in survivor mode, you lose some things along the way. You see, the Shunammite woman lost her house and field, and it would be equivalent to her source of income which had a domino effect in her entire livelihood but because this was the same Shunan, Shunammite woman that declared it is well uh, because this was the same Shunammite woman that took care of the prophet Elijah because this was the same Shunammite woman who understood what it was to serve uh, because this was the same Shunammite woman that had enough faith to believe that she can get something that she never got before she understood that the saving of her life came with benefits and and a part of it would be to get back what she lost you see she recognized having been justified she could go before the king hallelujah you are recognizing today because you've been justified you can go come into the uh, throne room of heaven where you can receive grace hallelujah to help you in every trouble, trouble time. And it just so happened when she went before the king and it, it just so happened when she bowed her knees at the throne room of glory. It, it just so happened when she lifted her hands in the sanctuary in it. And it just so happened that when she came out to release your glory in it. And it just so happened that when she went into a prayer closet and, and it just so happened that when she didn't have any place to pray, she was praying and, and it just so happened that when she went before the king her, 
her testimony was already being shared with the king because you see your testimony speaks for you see some of your testimonies are saying you've been faithful over a few things and some of your testimonies are saying you've been trusting the Lord with all of your heart and and some of your testimonies are saying better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere see some of your testimonies are saying it's for God I live and for God I die some of your testimonies are saying the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away but it's still blessed be the name of the Lord see I don't know what your testimony is but it's speaking for you right now at the throne room of glory and when the kings asked the woman she told him the story and the king appointed a court official for her saying restore redeemed all that was hers and along with all the income from the field from the day that she left the country until now all right, I thought I had a little bit more praise. There's some people in the room that's been dealing with some with someone reaping the benefits of what you established. There, there's some people in the room today, hallelujah, that's been occupying places, positions, and influence that God has called you to. But, but today is your day of redemption. And, and just tell them, hallelujah, I'm back now. And uh, I'm back like I never left. And I, I wasn't myself for a long time. But, but I'm back now, hallelujah. I had to go get some therapy. But, but I'm back now. I, I had to go take care of some things. But, but I'm back now. I, I needed some rest. Hallelujah. But I'm back now. Somebody say I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back like I never left. Thank you for keeping my seat warm for me. Thank you for helping take care of what was mine. But I'm back now. I almost lost it, hallelujah. But I'm back now. I, I'm back now, hallelujah. I couldn't do it back then, but I'm back now. I, I didn't have the capacity, I, but I'm back now. I, I had to get my education. I, I'm back now. I had to get my certificate, hallelujah. But I'm back now. Somebody say, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. The issue, the Shunammite woman, she didn't leave because she wanted to. She leave because God told her to. I just want to encourage somebody in the room this morning. If God told you to leave, he's going to take care of the rest. If God told you to do it, when you get back, you'll get it back with interest on top of it. You see, and nobody knows that better than a woman by the name of Ruth and a mother-in-law by the name of Naomi. You see, we all know the story. And the Bible sets up the scene to let us know that this was during the time of the judges. And during the time of the judges, it was very tumultuous time in Israel history. Because it was a time of division amongst the tribes of Israel. See, they were disobedient to the laws of God. And therefore experienced famine in their land. Eventually captivity as well. And the Bible says in Ruth 1 and 1. That now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. That there was a famine in the land. And, and Naomi, her husband, and her two sons traveled to the country of Moab. And you see, it's interesting because for Naomi and her family, it was a famine just like it was for the Shunammite woman. But in this particular time, God didn't give Naomi the instruction to go to the Philistine land. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God told Naomi and her family to go. You see, that's why. You have to be careful by what you call it God and never and what he never said because where God calls you to, he will prosper you in regardless of the surroundings. 
You see, the Moabites were an enemy to Israel, opposing them at every turn and engaged in numerous battles against Israel. And so they were in complete disobedience. It, it seems as if they were in survivor mode as well. You see, being in this mode sometimes can, can make you do things you wouldn't normally do. It, 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 it can make you abandon what you know is right and make you do irrational things and compromise your integrity. But their family were in a state of emergency. They were, they were hungry. And when you're hungry and thirsty, you'll eat anything. You see, the Bible says that it came to pass that Naomi's husband died. But, but not all hope was lost because she still had two sons. Sons representing the promise and representing the inheritance and representing the livelihood. Someone to continue the generation. But the Bible says, and the Bible says that her sons took Moabite women as their wives. One was named Orpha and the second was named Ruth. You see, this is another example of the dangers of living in survivor mode because God clearly gave directions for them not to intermarry. Because with foreign women, because God makes it clear that they would turn their hearts away from him. You see, you need a woman in your life that's going to turn your heart to God, not away. That was for free. You see, they did it anyway. And, and the Bible says that they lived a while comfortably for at least 10 years. But unfortunately, tragedy struck again. The Bible says both of Naomi's sons died. And they were left without no children and no husband. Now, at first, it would seem that Naomi made a wise decision because they were able to live in a land that they weren't experiencing famine, but it seems to have, have come with a, a steep cost. Is that anybody in the room today? You made a decision, and at first it seemed to fit you well, but there was some fine print you didn't read, and it left your pain more than you expected. See, they looked like they were the one, but you didn't do a background check, and instead of a help, they became a burden. Okay, before I met you, I had it all together. Now I look around and my life is in shambles. See, you made that transition thinking it would be a come up, but it brought you all the way back down. See, 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 but you know what? I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't feel all that mad at Naomi. She was just trying to take care of her family. You see, life happens. Sometimes you do things you never thought because you're in survivor mode. And sometimes you got to just make it do what it do with the cards you dealt. You know, life hands you cards and you just play the hand. So I'm not all that mad at her because I remember I was once there thinking I make the right decisions until it wasn't. And, and you see, when you hit rock bottom, the only place you can go is up. And, and when you tried everything, you can still try Jesus. And because the Bible says that a broken heart and a contrite spirit, God will not despise. Uh, uh, that you need to make that change and that change will, will be your entire life, which is Jesus Christ. And so Naomi made a decision. Uh, she made a decision that... She's not going to stay where it was no longer feeding her physically. Uh, 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 but I got to go back to what's feeding me spiritually. Because she did hear that that was bread in the house of God. You came here because you heard that there was joy in that city. You came in today because you heard that God was a healer. God was a provider, that he was still working miracles, that he was still doing exceedingly abundantly above more than they can ask or think. So I'm sure she probably remembered what David said that say, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I shall fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm, I, I, I'm sure there was some words that she heard that encouraged her to go back to Bethlehem. I, I don't know if it was that when my enemies come up against me, hallelujah, that my God will raise up a standard. I don't, I don't know 
know if she heard what the Lord said, that when the enemy comes up against me like a flood, that the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I don't know what she heard, but it was something that she heard that said, I got to get back to Bethlehem. And it seems as if her testimony made the ears of Ruth. It's funny because sometimes we don't want to give credit where credit is due. And, 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 and we want to talk about the mothers that is no longer needed. But I need a mother like Naomi who would lead me to Christ. I, I need a praying mother that would talk about Christ and, and show me how to pray and show me how to fall on my knees and show me how to lift up my hands. I, I need that old school Terrian mother that would come to the altar and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I don't care what they say. We still need the praying mothers of the church. I, I don't care what they say. We need somebody to know how to pray for you and not pray on you. So Naomi made a decision to go back to Bethlehem. And because her daughter-in-law, Ruth, had an experience with Jehovah, when it came time to separate, the Bible says that both Orpha and Ruth cried aloud. They wept. But see, there was a difference between Orpha and Ruth. And Orpha kissed her. And, and, and she said, okay, I'm going back. I'm going back to the foreign land. I, I'm going back to the foreign God. I, I'm going back to what's not feeding me spiritually. But, but because Ruth had an encounter with God, she said, for God I live and for God I die. Where you go, Naomi, I'll go with you. Your God will be my God and your people will be my people. I can't leave you. I got to keep going on to Bethlehem. You see, there is a difference between Orpha and, and, and Ruth. See, Ruth said, I'm choosing life. And, and Orpha said, I'm choosing death. Orpha said, I got to go on to glory. And, and Orpha said, I don't want to do that. Hallelujah. Ruth said, I press on the mark of the high court. For getting those things which are behind me. And Orpha said, I don't care about that. Which one are you this morning? Which one are you this morning? Are you the one that's going to press? Are you the one that's going to forget what's behind you? Are you the one that's going to forget, hallelujah, what it was like yesterday? I, I just need you to get the roof mentality. I just need you to cling. Oh, God, I feel it in my spirit. See, the Bible says that the older women uh, shall teach the younger women. Uh, and, and Ruth cling to Naomi because she knew that even though the Bible says that Naomi was bitter, there was still some joy on the inside of her. She knew, hallelujah, that if she just cling to her, Naomi, that, 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 that could be eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible says that both Ruth and Naomi traveled back to Bethlehem. And, and when they entered the city, the people exclaimed, look, there is Naomi. And it's funny, they was looking for her. It's, is that Naomi? But she don't look the same. I don't see her with her husband, and I don't see her with her two. Is that Naomi? And the Bible says that. Naomi said, hallelujah, that I, came, I left full, but I came back empty. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mora. And that's some of us today. Don't call me what God has ordained me to be. Call me something else. You see, Naomi not only lost what she had, she also lost all hope for her future. So I don't necessarily blame her. 
See, but what she forgot to take into account is that she didn't lose everything. <laughs> See, I just want you to know that you may have lost some stuff, but, but you didn't lose everything. You, you still got something left. You, you, you may have lost your peace, but you didn't lose your mind. You, you may have lost some money, but you still got your hustle. You, you may have lost some time, but God said that your latter days shall be greater than your former days. You may have lost some friendships, but you had to lose those in order for the real ones to come. You didn't lose everything. You still got something left. You see, Naomi came back with Ruth, her daughter-in-law. And it seemed, according to chapter 2, 2, 2 through 3, that Ruth wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Uh, she wasn't afraid to, to put in that work. And, 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 and she wasn't afraid to go and glean from the field to take care of her and her mother-in-law. And it just so happened to be. It just so happened to be that the field that she chose to glean from was the family's kinsman redeemer whose name was Boaz. You see, when you follow Christ, there's always just a just so happens. There, there's always, oh, isn't this a coincidence? There's, there's always this, oh, oh, it's perfect timing because Romans 8 and 28 declares that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and have been called according to his purposes. And so, as she's gleaning from the field, Boaz notices her, and, and everyone comes in for a meal. And, and, and just like the Shunammite woman, Ruth's testimony begins to speak for itself. You see, Boaz heard about how Ruth treated Naomi. You see, see, Boaz heard how she took care of her. And Boaz heard how she traveled with her. And, and Boaz heard how, how she never left her side. And, and Boaz heard how well he treated her. And so her testimony spoke for her. You see, when your life represents Christ, you don't need to do that much talking. You see, God speaks for you and, and favor follows you because the Bible declares that goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I don't got to do that much talking my life speaks for myself I don't gotta defend myself God defends me I don't gotta go God do a lot of back and forth because the Bible says hallelujah that he will bless those that bless you and he will curse those that curse you the Bible says touch not my anointed and, and do my prophets do no harm I don't gotta do that much talking because God speaks for me you see when she got up to gather the grain because of the favor that she had, we all know the story. The Bible says that Boaz told the people, go ahead and leave a little extra for her. <laughs> go ahead and pull out some, some more for her. And don't say nothing. And let her get however much she wants. Because when God stands up for you, he will do exceedingly and abundantly and above more than you can ever ask or you can ever think. See, see, Ruth was just doing her job. She was just trying to get some money. She was just working in the field. She was doing whatever God had called her to do. But while she's doing it, she got favor. While you're doing it, you're getting promotion. While you're doing it, your name is being spoken in rooms that you're not even in. While you're serving it, and while you're taking care of your family, and you're taking care of your children, and you're taking care of your parents, and God says, leave, leave a bit, little bit extra, and, and put some little more in that checking account, and, and allow them to get that job, and, and allow that loan to come through, and, and allow that car loan to be paid off. And, and I, I don't know what you need, but, but God is saying in this moment, hallelujah, that whatever you need, I left a little bit extra for it. And just like Ruth, hallelujah, you just got to go and pick it up. And you see, Naomi went and she, I'm sorry, Ruth went and she told Naomi what had happened to her because little did Ruth know, she didn't even know that this man was the kinsman redeemer. He didn't even let her know 
that he was kin to Ruth's husband's father. But Naomi knew. That's how come you got to be around people that got a little wisdom. You got to be around people who lived a little bit longer. That know some history and, and can some, know some genealogy and can point you in the right direction. See, don't discount. I can't. Don't discount the words of the wise. We still need it. And so when Naomi heard this, she said, oh, oh, daughter, this is our time. And this is an opportunity. You know what you got to do, girl? You got to go and you got to clean up. You got to get yourself together. And, and you got to meet him at the threshing floor. See, the Bible calls it the threshing floor because it's the place of judgment. See, see what happens is, is that she found favor in the sight of him. And so now she has to go at the feet of Boaz and uncover his feet because it was a sign that she wanted her, him to redeem her. Okay. Okay, okay, so go down to the fleshing floor. And when he lies down, notice the place where he's lying and go in and uncover his feet. And, and the Bible says that she did all that and, and Boaz recognized that she was not the nearest redeemer. There was another that was nearer and closer than him. And so... Boaz goes to the city gate, and he goes and he, and he, and he says to the one that is the closest kinsman redeemer, he said, listen, um, 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 there is this field that belongs to our brother, and um, if you want it, you can buy it back. And the funny thing is that he said, okay, yeah, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. But then he also said, well, if you buy it, you're also going to have to purchase Ruth. And once he said that, he said, oh, no, I don't want it. See, you got to be careful of people that want to buy the property, but they don't want you. Okay, uh, how can I break this down? They want the, the milk, but won't buy the cow. Is that how they say? Okay. You, you got to be careful of those. They, they, they don't want to put the... Okay. They want every, oh, okay. Okay, I'll stop. I'll leave that there. But the Bible clearly says that he wanted the property, but he didn't want her. That's what the Bible say. I didn't say it. That's what the, it's been going on since for, forever. And he said, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want it. And, and Boaz says, good. Because another man's trash is another... Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I, you know what? Let me get back on my sermon. Where am I at, Jesus? Okay. Okay, so, so, so Boaz said, if you don't want her, I'll take her. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, when they didn't want you, I want you. When they threw you away, I pulled you out of the muck and mire. Jesus said, I know they talked about you, but I won't. I know they threw you away, but I won't. I know they said, thought you was trash, but to me, you're treasure. And what I'm going to do for you, just like Boaz did for Ruth, is that he redeemed her. The, the Bible says that he bought the property, and, and he not only bought the property, but he, but he married Ruth. And, and because he married Ruth, and Naomi got the benefit. And the Bible says that because of that, that God granted them a son. And here is the full redemption part. The Bible says that their son was named Obed. And if you don't know who Obed is, the Bible says that he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. So, oh God. So Naomi came in empty. Hallelujah. She came in bitter. But God had redeemed her and her 
daughter-in-law in such a way where she got back that which she lost. And she also got a future, a hope, and an expected. And I just need somebody to give God some praise right now in this place for God giving you a hope, a future, and an expected. And I, I, I don't care what it looks like. I, I know you lost some stuff on the way, but, but God is saying it's time to get it back. I, I know you lost some things. I, I know you dropped some things. I, I know it don't look all the way well, but God is saying I'm getting it back for you. I, I know you had to take some time off, but tell the devil I'm back now. Tell your enemies I'm back now. Tell them I'm coming for everything I lost. I, I'm coming for everything they said I couldn't have. They said you could never. They said you could never. They said you wouldn't make it, but, but I'm back now. I know it looks like I'm falling off, but, but you don't know that God is restoring the years. And he's restoring my time, and he's giving me back everything I lost. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. And the Bible says in Joel 2 and 25, and I will restore, and I will restore, and I will restore. And I just gotta give a, a quick testimony you know, when I was early on in my life, I, 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 I did some things and I made some bad decisions. I, I knew that God had called me to, to something and I, I knew it was, it, was, it was in the ministry, in church. I, I mean, I grew up in a certain type of way and it felt like I was being groomed from a very young age. And, 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 and my desire was to go to school academically. But because of life, I flunked out, I dropped out, I didn't finish. And it's funny because during that time, I had accumulated over 60 semi thousand dollars in student loan debt, and I had no degree to show for it. I thought. I used to say, Lord, I ain't going to never be able to pay this off. But God had showed me a path. He gave me wisdom to stay on track and keep up on what I needed to keep up. Okay. I ended up enrolling back in school. Long story short, I'm currently a junior in college. Okay. But here is the shout part. Those 69 semi thousand dollars completely forgiven. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 wait. Ask me how much I actually pay out of my pocket to those loans. Zero. I pay nothing. So, what that means is this. God redeemed my time. He made it as if it never happened. And he put me in a place as where I should have been all along. God redeemed my time. And the Bible says that I will restore to you the years that was taken the years that were fumbled, the years you didn't get it right, the years you kept making that mistake over and over and over and over again. I will restore unto you your younger years, your older years. Your, I will do it. I, I will restore you. I will redeem you. I'll make it so it never happened. I'll make it so you were supposed to be where you were all along. I'll make it so 
You'll speak with such eloquence and you'll lead with such grace and you'll be excelled in your career and, 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 and you'll be as if it never happens. The Bible says that Naomi was able to care for her grandchild. Never would she have imagined that he would be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray, Father, right now, Lord, that you would add a blessing to the reading, to the word of God that has been preached on today. Father, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that this word, oh God, will continue, Father, Lord, to flow throughout their week, throughout their month, throughout this year, understanding that you are redeeming the years, that you are restoring the time, that you are still going to do exactly, Father, what you promised. Father, I pray, Lord, right now that their latter days are greater than their former days, that they understand that you have a hope and a future and an expected end for them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. And let's celebrate the woman of God on this morning. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all heard her testimony right. I, I, anybody got any student loans out here? Can somebody just holler, same grace, same grace, the same God that did it for her can do it for you. Amen. Same grace. Thank you, Lord. Now, she had to make some payments, y'all. I know how that program, you got to make some, okay. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. We thank the Lord for that message, that word on today. And we do want to open up this time for those that would want to give their life to Christ. To really know that you have made your calling and election sure. That your decision has been made to follow Christ. I tell you, the doors of our church, they never close. They remain open at all times for any moment at any time that you decide that is for you. When we hear a word like to that, like we have today, it's a reminder of what God has done for us. And we've been redeemed. And we have to remember that on today. If anyone wants to come at this time, we want to give. We don't want to rush through this moment. It's an important time. And for those that have had been redeemed, sometimes we need that reminder. The enemy will try to come and question, make you question your own salvation, but you want to make your calling and election sure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So at this time as well, I want to make sure everyone knows that if you've been thinking about making the city of joy your church home, this is your opportunity to come as well. As we begin to take our offering, when you come around, if you just stay over here to my right, we just want to get some information from you. I tell you, one other quick announcement that we want to make is on May 21st, May 21st, so the Sunday after next, we will be starting our next new members class. Oh, come on, somebody. Let's celebrate that we're going to be starting our next new members class on May the 21st, that's two Sundays from today. We know next Sunday is Mother's Day, and we just plan to do some special things for our mothers. Can we just all in advance celebrate our mothers that we'll be recognizing next week? Um, also want to bring up another special announcement. If we could bring this up on the screens for our Celebrate Recovery. Uh, they are beginning a series that's coming up this week. Uh, entitled Powerless, and they're going to be taking you through a, a series here of, through our Celebrate Recovery lesson, is Powerless. I, 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 Brother Dan has really wanted to impress the power of testimony 
of those that are giving their word of what they've been through to help others who are dealing with addiction and recovery. And so we want to make sure everyone knows on Thursday, this Thursday, 6 p.m., that new class will be starting up. And we want to make sure everyone that needs this. And sometimes we all need something to not be ashamed, but to get the help that we need. Amen. 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 And then just a quick reminder that we will be having our women's group this Tuesday as well as on Saturday, our men's group will be getting together. So we do have those announcements before you. But with all that, I'm going to ask you all to stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. As we get ready to receive our offering on today. And as a reminder, for those that would like to join, you can come right over here to my right. I have my, my lovely wife helping me out over there. She's going to wave there. Beautiful yellow. Amen. Amen. All right. That's me. That's me. All right. <laughs> All right. But we do want to get ready to give on today. Uh, we can give, of course, by Givelify. We have multiple ways, five different ways to give. Givelify, Cash App. You can go through our website and also through text to give. But this is a part of the service that we all can participate in in some form or fashion. We are a church that believes in tithing because there is a blessing in giving. For it is more blessed to give than to receive. But how many can testify that when you've given, God has made you receive as well. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 So as we get ready to give, let's have a word of prayer. And I'm actually going to do our prayer of our offering and our benediction as we get ready to move into this week. We have a full week of activity, so I want you to stay involved, stay active. Let's keep our pastor and first lady in prayer as they're traveling, and we'll just we look forward to everyone coming back the next point in time. Amen? So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you first for the word that you gave us on today, the reminder, oh God, that we have been redeemed, oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the woman of God that sacrificed to deliver the word. So we ask that as she poured out into us, Lord, you pour back into her, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for what we have received. And now it's our opportunity to give unto you just a little bit to show, Lord, we thank you for all that you've given. And this portion to help your kingdom move forward is my gift back to you. So, Lord, we just thank you. And we truly give you glory. I'm praying over every family that's represented here today. I'm praying, oh God, for all of our online saints, oh God, that have logged in this morning, oh God. We're praying, oh God, this word touch them in a special way. We're praying, oh God, that you keep each and every one of us throughout this week. Let our light so shine, oh God, that men will be drawn unto you, oh God. Let us be a living, walking testimony of your greatness, your goodness, and your mercy. Lord, we'll be careful to give your name all the glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Somebody help me say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. As our greeters bring you around, you may consider yourselves dismissed. Amen, amen.